know if you are a politician, if you are a Nigerian, um, if you are a journalist, or even a public um, office holder, one of the biggest tasks for you this week would have been keeping up with all of the breaking news. Um, from the president signing the Data Protection uh, Act Bill into law, to his um, announcement of the appointment of eight special advisors out of 20, um, comments made by Asari Dukubo about the, the oil theft in the Niger Delta region and the suspension of the EFCC um, chairman. Those are some of the biggest stories you would have had to keep up with this week. Good afternoon. This is Standpoint. I am Precious Amai. Now let's get into um, those big stories. One of them was the inauguration of the 10th Assembly on Tuesday, the 12th of um, the 10th, rather, of um, June. Now, with so many intrigues surrounding whether this was going to go the way of the party, whether we're going to see the defiance from um, some party members, it went exactly the way um, the APC wanted it to go. Akbabio emerged as the Senate president, and we saw um, Jibrin Barau emerging as the deputy Senate president. In the House, it also went the same way. In fact, the House was a landslide where a lot of people had expected that defiance. But it went the way of the party once again. Um, we saw um, Abbas emerging as the Speaker of the House and um, Benjamin Kalu emerging as the Deputy Speaker of the House. Now, the big question is, what does this mean for the 10th Senate? And what does this mean for Nigerians? We're also going to look at the suspension of the EFCC. Let's bring in, uh, EFCC Chairman rather, let's bring in our guest. We're joined by um, a member representing Ngaski Shanga Yaori Federal Constituency of Kebi State, Honorable um, Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu. He joins us from Abuja Studio. We're also joined by, a, by Professor Abubakar Sani Ridwan Mat Matazu. He's the Dean, Faculty of Law, Usmanu Danfodio University, Sokoto. Good to have um, both of you join us. Now, let me start with um, um, Honorable Dr. Um, uh, Honorable Sununu. Uh, I know that you are in the House of Representatives, but let's, let's start with what's going on in the Senate. We're getting comments from um, Abdulaziz Yari um, calling what happened at the Senate a betrayal and that some people were against him. I just want to get your comments on that. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me to this very important program. Well, uh, the comment is, uh, you know, what is politics? Politics is dynamic. Uh, it's never done until it's done and completely done. So we all knew that in politics, you can start with a large teams, but in politics, a lot of things count. Vested interests, stakeholders, so many. So along the line, when it is not completely done, you will not be sure that you have won. So to me, uh, there is that policy probably that the senators on their own thought that the best way out of it is for them to align with party so that we can have a Ranko free tent assembly to avoid our previous experiences that uh, we had before. And also it could be really another reason to be that we must have a political balance to allow an effective leadership that guarantees uh, equal, uh, uh, active participation by all zones of Nigeria, thereby uh, then thinking that the best way they could do is also to have the uh, South, South, uh, and South East participating. For the South East, the Deputy Speaker is also from the House of Representatives, who came from, uh, from Abia State, and also he is coming also from South, South. In this regard, you will now say that the, both the executive legislature there is no zone that is left out. Some zones were also rewarded by the leadership of uh, either as a uh, secretary to the government of federation or the party chairman, like in the zone, North Central. The other zone also have their vice president in the Southeast. So in the Northwest, we also were also able to have a, a speaker. So therefore, I think probably the equation overnight change, reasoning uh, and considering Nigerian unity and the desire to have a Ranko free uh, tent assembly might have influenced the senator's decision to act the way they have acted. I'm not a member, as you rightly said, so whatever I'm just thinking is just my own analysis on the factors that may have likely gave us that result, uh, the result we have seen. Thank you. 
But what about the, the House of Representatives, uh, where the, there was, um, in, instead of a secret ballot, we saw the open ballot. And if I think it was just about six um, House of Reps members who did not vote for for Abbas. Everybody seemed to have gone with um, gone with you know, Tajuddin Abbas. About 353 members went with him. Do you think that there are likely to be the same sentiments um, from Jaji and, and Wase about feeling betrayed as well, um, considering how members voted? I don't think so. I don't think so. You see, the criticism about open uh, uh, ballot system is uncalled for because the House is guided by the standing rules. And in uh, standing rule, uh, order one, rule one says that the business of national uh, of, of the House of Representatives plenary must be done according to the standing order of the House of Representatives. And that is what is prescribed by the presenting order of the House of Representatives. And then uh, we've seen what we have done. And if you can look at it, to say that there is going to be a rancor or any misgiving, uh, is, I think it's misquoted. Whoever watched uh, the last sitting of the House of Representatives before we adjourn, you will have seen fiscally Dr. Wase, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Honorable Wase, uh, actively participating moving here and there, and trying to uh, give a leadership and guidance to how uh, we should relate uh, this. So I don't think there's any uh, iota or even an atom of that uh, feeling in his own mind because we have seen him actively participating in the plenary uh, decisions. And uh, he has also raised up and then uh, even moved the motion for, I think, for the adjournment of the 9th, uh, 10th Assembly for our research that we are currently uh, ongoing. So I think the whole is, that is the beauty of democracy, to allow the people to express themselves. Expression does not mean winning. So in a contest, there is bound uh, the possibility of you winning or just losing. And what is uh, much important is for those who win not to have the feeling that winners get this up. Extend the hand of fellowship. And you can also see even the speaker, uh, Honorable Taji Dina Abbas, when he is to call for raising uh, a motion for adjournment, he called Wase too. So that shows that there is that very good understanding and uh, we have already blended. So nobody is seeing that because you, are, you belong to uh, uh, Wase Kam or you belong to Tajuddin Abbas Kam or any other. No, all we are, we are that acting as members. And as members, you are bound to align based on the principle, your conviction and orders. And does not mean that after that... Uh, uh, three to four hours process, the house remain, uh, uh, will, will remain divided forever. No. We have a leadership that is focused and that is uh, extending the hand of free, uh, uh, friendship to everybody, and we are being carried along irrespective of your party uh, affiliation. What we want is an assembly that is going to be stable, proactive, focused, that will align uh, with uh, executive. I'm not saying a robust, I'm saying align. So that we can have a Ronco free tent assembly that would translate in the end to the dividends of democracy to average Nigeria. We'll get to that alignment in just a moment and what it will mean and how Nigerians will, 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 um, will interpret that alignment. But let's bring in Honorable Abubakar to the conversation. Uh, sorry, let's bring in Professor Abubakar rather to the conversation. Uh, we've seen how um, you know, the, the lawmakers voted. Even the, the opposition that had tagged itself greater majority, and at some point, were even threatening to fill their own field, their own candidate, also fell in line. I just want to get your thoughts, you know, on how all of the election played out, the inauguration played out on, on, um, on Tuesday. Thank you very much. I am grateful for inviting me to this important intellectual discourse in which we are all witnesses to what had happened at the National Assembly, both at the Senate as well as the House of Representatives. The election has come and gone, and we have seen winners, and I cannot, for those who could not get it, to be considered as losers. They are all winners. Because the most important thing we have witnessed there is that there is cohesion, there is good relationship, there is good neighborliness, there is indeed cohesion in what they intend to do, and that is what is expected of them when they have settled up to the the, the, the training they are undergoing now, as rightly stated by Honorable Simon, and what we are also expecting them of doing is that having them settle and they elected their leaders, 
this showcases how so United Nigeria is in the sense that able zone, of which we have six in number, has certain level of representation from the presidency down to the Senate as well as House of Representatives. So this showcases the fact that Nigeria is one and nothing could divide it. And when the senators as well as members of the House of Representatives set up, we hope to see proactive and robust legislation being made so the country will move forward so that the anticipation and the aspiration of able Nigerian could be achieved. Mm. And Prof, when you have a situation where, you know, um, party supremacy takes preeminence, and, and, and what does that mean for governance in the country? Because the fear from some Nigerians is that, look, um, we're just going to have, as usual, the, the normal name is now rubber stamp assembly. And that's what, you know, some Nigerians are saying. But, you know, as you saw all that played out, what do you think it means for governance? I do not believe in that, and I cannot suspect that the Ten National Assembly could just be a robust term, whereby every single senator will only say, it, okay, without having brainstormed at the plenary as well as other fora, maybe when they are at various committee level meetings, I'm sure nothing will be expected short of anything good. Because we have seen even in the National Assembly, some are of the belief that the Assembly was just a robust term, but however, even then, there are those who are diehard members of the ruling party. They are there always challenging whatever is brought. And as they are not doing so not to terminate or to truncate the supremacy of their party. But their intention is always to see good things are brought to the Nigerian populace so that the country can move forward. But the idea of having a, an assembly which could come, we beat them as a robust term, is far from reality. We hope to see proactive legislation being made now no matter what is the feeling of the party, they should be discarded in as far as we want to see Nigeria moving forward. They should, they should as well, as members of the National Assembly, disregard their party affiliation as to a case during the election. Mm. Well, let's take the conversation back to Honorable Sununu. Honorable, uh, we know that you're on recess at the moment, but can you give us an idea? Because we know that the next thing now um, would be to... Um, to choose who the principal officers will be. And um, what can you tell us in that regard? I didn't hear your last the question. I said I know, I know that the next thing, or Nigerians know that the next thing for the, after your recess, when you resume, is to pick the, um, to pick the principal officers of the house. Um, can you give us any information in that regard on how that is likely to play out? Uh, you see, the, we must understand that party play a role seriously in the, in the running of affairs of choosing the principal officers. Caucuses are going to meet and look at the, how they can uh, have everybody carried along. For example, in our Northwest Caucus, we are going to meet, but already we have a speaker. The minority wing also are meeting to have their leadership, so also the majority people. So we are going to zone it like uh, uh, what is happening now, areas that are supposed to produce the majority leader, let's say for a lead, leading party, uh, through the interaction with party leadership, will now look at it and look at the candidate within the members based on experience, reachability, and then the ability to carry people along and uh, to serve as a key stakeholder that will put the members of the party together the party will now arise under decisions and canvass the support of members within the National Assembly so that they, uh, the House of Representatives or the Senate so that they can support just as it was done to the election of the presiding officers. So that with that, you now see that uh, you have a quality uh, presiding officers within the House of uh, National Assembly. And I don't think it's going to be something hard. We have already crossed, uh, crossed the bridge. We have a uh, the presiding officers already is, uh, elected. So I think what is needed now is just we are going to put it together uh, and see how we can provide a better uh, this, uh, representation in the uh, presiding officers, uh, sorry, the leadership of the National Assembly. But, but is that already, already been done in your party? Can you, can you give us an idea of how, because you mentioned that it is going to be zoned. Can you give us an idea of how it is likely going to be zoned? 
Well, I don't want to preempt the party or the caucuses yet. Uh, we are soon going to meet, so I don't want to say this is where it is going or this is where it is not going. But very soon we are going to have uh, those areas zone. And we also, uh, this, like uh, in the Ninth Assembly too, it was done to us. So we also have to take our, the, the Northwest caucus sat down and we all agree and we came down uh, along with the name of uh, Alassane Adodo who had to be our majority leader. So it is a democratic issue. It, around, on, right now, there's ongoing consultations to carry everybody along so that nobody will feel he's isolated in decision making. So it will not be wrong of me to now come and preempt zoning meetings and uh, this thing probably so that I didn't be carried that uh, I've just, uh, party has endorsed this when I'm not in position to say, oh, to say that the caucuses are also endorsed also, also candidate. But I assure you very soon that the political and uh, negotiation consultations uh, give and take that is going on will produce something that is going to be acceptable to the members of National Assembly. And also, uh, Nigeria will have the confidence that we have a team in, on ground that can do the best uh, for this country. This, this I assure you. All right, let, let me bring in um, Prof to the conversation. Prof, you know, this is really um, more about governance than it is about politics. And, you know, once he, the Honorable said that, look, they have crossed the biggest hurdle, which is to pick the, the presiding um, officers of the, of, the, of the assembly. But now Nigerians want to see governance and not politics. What do you think is the biggest task ahead of this particular government, whether it's at the executive or at the legislative level? Uh, thank you very much. From the National Assembly, we have seen how they have conducted the election, which is around 40, as it has been rightly indicated. So now it means that they are about to settle for business the same way the presidency has set up for business, what is expected of them is that, first, by the time the, 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 His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Nebu submits the list for nomination into his cabinet, so he has started doing that as far as special advisors are concerned, they should not waste time, they should, as much as possible, with dispatch now, treat those issues that are provided to them with dispatch so that they can also set up for business. The way the president has started showing us that, yes, he is ready for business, there are proactive decisions being taken, which is to the admiration of able citizens of Nigeria. So we expect the National Assembly, which we hope, as someone was saying, that they are about to settle now to discuss on how they fill in the remaining leadership as principal officer of the National Assembly. If this is done, I don't think if there's anything that remains rather than to sit down and see and make laws that could be for the betterment of Nigerians so that they could be held the way Mr. President is being held or have been taken some decision which nobody has imagined and everybody is happy with them. So the same way we expect the National Assembly now, after having settled by electing their principal officer now, to show to others that they are, yes, they are ready for business and yes, indeed, we are in an era of renewed hope. It, and you mentioned the screening of, of um, ministers, and perhaps, you know, Nigerians would say that's the biggest immediate task ahead of the 10th Assembly. Um, just before now, we will see, you know, how people, you know, the House will say, or the Assembly will say, take a bow and go. And Nigerians were wondering, you know, if this is really what, if this is what screening is about compared to what we see in other climes. How would you expect the, this Assembly to proceed um, with the screening, you know, when the president eventually sends the, his, his list and names of ministers? I don't think this should be conveyed anymore. Because everybody wants to see how best a minister could intellectually perform general security. A situation whereby somebody, because he has been opportune to have served in the assembly previously, and now nominated as a minister, having come for security, just ask him to bow and go. That is not a screening. We don't expect to see this type of security anymore. No matter how many times one serves in the assembly, having him now been appointed, the work of the legislature is different from the work of the executive. In this sense, now if it is a clean, let it be a screen proper. The way somebody who has never been opportunity to serve in an assembly at any rate is screen. Let all others be also subjected to this type of screening by having the document being checked and the all other issues that could be forwarded them in form of questions could be raised again for them to respond and see how adequately they are enriched in their intellectual sense and the other issues relating to the progress of Nigeria is concerned. But the idea, as you have said, 
that some would come and they would just be all bow and go. That should be a discarded issue and that should not be condoned anymore. Hmm. And Honorable, what is the disposition of the House um, and the Assembly in general to, you know, in terms of how it, it, it tends to work with the executive and, and particularly the president? Uh, I think this is a very important question because a lot of uh, uh, people have uh, misperceptions on the running of the National Assembly. Well, let's just take, uh, let's see, uh, let's take average family life, husband and wife. What they require for them to sustain the safe is an alignment. And where there is good alignment and there is peace and understanding in that family, in Hausa, if you are not lucky, you'll be called Mijin Hajia. What does it mean that there's somebody who is under the control of his wife and you'll be seen as rubber stamp? So, uh, but the issue is, it's not the aim to just come and have a ranko, everything, but there should be an understanding and mutual respect and a common goal to give the dividends of democracy to Nigeria so that whatever comes to the House that is, or to the National Assembly, that has the capacity, ability, and potentials to move Nigeria forward will be accepted by the National Assembly irrespective of our party affiliation. So also, when you have something that is detrimental as representative of the people, may be seen on the eyes of the executive as uh, being good, but it appears to be to the House of National Assembly, to the side of National Assembly, as a, uh, not going to favor Nigerians. That would be a uh, decision. We have a mutual way of coming together to address issues, and that must be sustained. Let me take you and let me give you an example of what I mean by good alignment. During the COVID-19, at that time in the Ninth Assembly, I was the Chairman House Committee on Healthcare Services, and in the amendment budget for the 2020-2020 uh, supplementary budget, where it was aimed at addressing COVID-19 uh, issues through so many interventions. The executive came with the idea of having zonal uh, three molecular laboratories in all geopolitical zones in the country. And that was presented in the, uh, in the budget, and it was what was presented to us as amendment, uh, as a supplementary budget. But during the budget defense of that a supplementary budget, we asked the question, we asked the ministry and uh, uh, stakeholders there, okay, who runs this uh, laboratory? Who will take their job? Who will they? And actually, it appear, uh, we are not convinced and comfortable with answers offered, uh, offered. So what is the decision of the House? The National Assembly as at that time will say, okay, rather than creating new laboratories that may be just a white elephant project, project and may not uh, translate to service delivery, let us use that money to upgrade all our tertiary hospitals laboratories and also to upgrade our regulatory bodies like uh, NAVDAC, uh, NIPRI Pharmaceutical Research Institute, a National Medical Institute of Research in Lagos, and many other institutions and if, uh, uh, with, that, with that fund. And that was done. And currently, I will tell you that we have more than uh, uh, 50, uh, 60 public laboratories that can do molecular laboratory. So has it been that the, what people are perceiving the National Assembly of robust staff, we allow that to go. We will have by now have so many uh, scattered uh, laboratories that are not translating to our decision. So what we needed is an alignment and understanding. What, what you are describing... And, and I hear you, but what, what you're describing, many Nigerians will say that's a drop in the ocean compared to um, the many other bills and, and policies that you said yes to, uh, and all the letters you said yes to without, you know, um, disagreeing with, with the former president. But let's talk about, um, because you mentioned that if the bill or if the policy or decision of the president is um, it's good for the people you are going to align. But if it's detrimental, you are, you know, you, and your people are saying, look, that you don't like this particular policy, that you're going to speak against it. But talk to us about um, the, the disposition of the House or the position of the House um, to the president's recent decision, especially the one on the suspension of the EFCC uh, chairman. I didn't hear your last uh, this thing. I, would, I was asking you about the position of the House um, on, this, on the decisions, recent decisions made by the president, especially the one on the suspension of the EFCC chairman? You see, we have to understand that there are prerogative powers of the president. He has the, in many instances, he has the powers to appoint. 
Some appointments will require the screening of the National Assembly, most especially the Senate. And he also is at the liberty to also fire. So I think there is nothing that, uh, uh, as far as we are concerned, as the National Assembly is concerned, is the fact that the President has the power to appoint and also have the power to sack based on the information that are available to him or based on the need of that particular circumstances to carry people that has shared his common vision in moving the country forward. Uh, if you even uh, this, is, if you look at the social media, even the then uh, uh, EFCC chairman was saying he knew he's just 40 years. He can be sacked now. He can be sacked tomorrow. He can be sacked when the next government come, uh, comes in. So it's not that something that is new. You understand? And it's nothing that the president has acted outside his powers that can create a rancor in their distance. So as far as, far as we are concerned, the president acts within his mandate. And he has the capacity to do that. Uh, I don't think there's any uh, issue between him and national, between the president actions and national assembly's position. And, and Prof, um, let's talk about, because many people are saying that Luke, uh, let's talk about the suspension. Many people say, look, um, until proven guilty, um, there should, innocence should be maintained and perhaps, you know, it should, be, uh, should have been allowed, even with the CPN governor, that they should have been allowed to, um, continue until they are proven guilty because sometimes when you find these people not guilty you hardly find them returning to office but some people say look you cannot continue um, on the seat when on that seat when you have already when the allegations against you it is always better to leave and then you know if you are found not guilty you can return where, where do you stand on this prof uh, the, the 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 true position is that once there are certain allegations level against, against any official and uh, which requires investigations. There's no how that person could be left occupying his chair because he could truncate, he could interfere with the investigation. So if that is so, the suspension is in order as the Honorable Senator has rightly indicated. So because there are certain allegations which are to be proven in your court of law. So right now, even with the suspension, the two gentlemen could be taken to be People who have not yet been convicted, they have not yet been arraigned. But however, in as far as there are certain allegations, then they have to be kept office. If they don't do it on themselves, then the president has the duty, as it is a mandate upon him now, to get them going. He has the, the mandate of hiring and firing, but I'm sure due diligence and regard to law has been had. Especially when there are certain allegations which need to be proven. This allegation could be only proven successfully if these gentlemen are not occupying their seats. Especially when we say abuse of office. It is an act or omission that is leveled against an officer, which is against the norm, against the dictate of the law. He has been granted that power, but it is abuse. Abuse, abuse is the call of the exercise of what has been given to him, but there has been found him to be, he has been found to be wanted. So in that sense, they have to be suspended. Suspension is not the end or termination of the appointment. If after necessary investigation has been conducted, they are found to be innocent. No one will stop the president from returning them back to their offices. But in as far as the allegations of abuse of office, especially, say, for example, for Bauer, as chairman of the EFCC, the allegations are mainly three, politicization of EFCC as a commission, a cosmopolitan one for that nature. So in those circumstances, that allegation, if proven well, it could succeed. But there has never been a situation whereby the agency has been free from politicization. Secondly, the issue of violation of human rights and disregard of court orders, which is supposed to be, especially in prison, that could be likened to a situation whereby everybody, as far as I do, open the concern, Every person, as far as an official or government in any agency is concerned, is guilty of that offense. So, for example, if we are saying that he has to take himself to prison, how could he do that? If I, in, my, in, my, in my capacity, even if I have been power, could I do that? Nobody could ever do that. But who is certain with that responsibility now to think that, yes, the orders, rulings, and judgment of the court are adhered to? rather than the Inspector General of Police. That man also is bound to be wanting in the exercise of his powers because he is not willing to do so. So if he hasn't done so, then how do you expect somebody that having him been 
found guilty of quantum of court. Not say I'm carrying myself to the prison. Mm. And, and how, how far do you, do you expect this shake up, this um, clean up to go? Some have called it an uh, institutional clean up by the president. We understand that some ministers have also been invited by, by the EFCC. How far do you expect this shake up or clean up to go? So the way I see it is that some people have to go for, 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 for they are going now to uh, every investigation to be carried out successfully. For example, Bauer, there may be some other person whom, if he is still maintaining his purposes, that investigation could not be conducted successfully. So they have to be asked to go, and especially those allegations labeled against the suspended CBN governor, he, they could not be achieved the way they are supposed to be achieved in as far as he maintains his office. Same thing with Bauer. So in those circumstances, they have to go. So the investigation could be carried out successfully with the humble hope that they could be arraigned before a court of law. If the court of law finds found them guilty, so be it. If they are through, so it is. Mm. Honorable, um, some have said, look, that you know, some of these issues were seen is also um, as a result of the, um, the National Assembly, especially the Night Senate, not, not doing its job as it should, because the Night Senate, did, uh, not the Night Senate, the Night Assembly, rather, has um, oversight function over some of this some of these um, government agencies who do not seem to have, or which do not seem to have regulators, as it were, that the assembly is supposed to be the regulator. And because the assembly failed to do its function like it should, and that's why some of these issues are coming up. I want you to respond to that, and, how, how, and then you also um, tell us how you think that the 10th um, assembly should proceed um, or address some of these gaps in, in terms of oversight function of the assembly. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, oversight is one of the core functions of uh, uh, National Assembly, and uh, which I believe we are doing quite, quite all right. Uh, most of the time, I think uh, uh, there are a lot of issues that are challenging. But however, so many successes have been recorded. There is no MDA that will say that have not received National Assembly as far as an uh, issue of oversight is concerned in their own domain to see how things are done or how things were done. But you see, most of the time is what uh, brings uh, about uh, slowdown in oversight functions was the way budget is being implemented in the country. Let's say, for example, we are in 2023 now, about going for the preparation of 2024 budget. Now, the 2023 implementation, in fact, even the 2022 implementation, has not gone, uh, gone far. In some MDA stockholders of us now go into 2023. So you find that by the time you go for an oversight, all you'll be, first, uh, you'll be uh, shown is the processes that have so far been commenced and could not be concluded yet. What is the issue that is slow in doing business of procurement in this country? And I think for our government, uh, the current government to succeed, that must be addressed. You understand? Uh, let's meet, say, for example, one of the, the, the ministers have oversight. It. As at uh, October, sorry, as at November ending, I'm sure that the ministry has received 100% 2022 budget implementation. But as at the time, the, 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 uh, the account was about to be closed, for the consolidation of the subsequent year to be to start, the implementation was less than 20 percent. So you can see, and when you ask what is the due process, they say that due process is so cumbersome, it takes you longer time. Uh, to, you, you, first of all, you from the Administrative Standards Board, some may require uh, fake approval, and then you go to the Bureau of Public Enterprises, and I think uh, Bureau, uh, Bureau of Public Procurement, sorry. And I think that's where we need to add the capacity in terms of the manpower, personnel, and effectiveness so that more or less time will be spent in BPP uh, before uh, they can give permission for the procurement uh, uh, process to complete. And then the other major issue is also delay in budgetary releases. When you have a delay in budgetary releases, also it affects the release. So now you have, a, you have papers in your budget. So, so, so has been allocated uh, for procurement of, let's say, vehicles. For a very long time, the process could not conclude. Conclusion was done, money was not released. Now you as a legislator, you only be shown the processes 
But at the final execution, you are, all, you are already in the following year. So you have to be doing retrospective uh, oversight. So these are all, some of the major issues that we have to address so that we can have an effective uh, oversight. And also, definitely, we need also the capacity of members and also the administrative aspect of each and every committee in terms of leadership, the clerk and the co must be also improved so that we can have those capacity. But in the end, I will tell you that this current, uh, the tenth assembly, you see something differently. Already there is a good understanding. You can aptly describe the current uh, executive as the product of national assembly. This is from Mr. President, the Vice President, the, the SGF, and even the First Lady of the country, uh, the Chief of Staff to the President, and many of them are all product of the National Assembly. And even most of the promises, special yeah. advisors, you see, the Chief of Staff, even the Chief of Staff is a product of the National Assembly. You're making a lot of promises. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that we'll have this conversation again with you when, you know, you're marking your one year um, next year, and we'll, we'll tell you, you know, we'll give you your scorecard, and we'll see whether what you said today and what is being done at the same thing. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, Honorable Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu, the member representing Ngaski Shanghai Auru, Federal Constituency of Kebi State, and also Professor Abu Bakasani Ridwan Matazu, the Dean Faculty of Law, Usmanu Danford University, Sokoto. Thank you both for talking to us. Thank you.